Gary. My name is uh, Rod Williams. I'm Vice President of Marketing with the Business Aircraft Division, and I'm very glad to be here. The eBay show is uh, our number one business aircraft show in the international region, so this is uh, an exceptionally important show for us, and I'm glad you're able to uh, uh, join us here while we're at the show. Very similar to Gary, I'll uh, cover the current market environment plus a 20-year forecast. If you uh, may recall, last Farm Bureau we introduced a 20-year forecast for the first time, uh, moving from a 10-year forecast. I believe we are one of the only companies to do a 20-year forecast, and I'll follow up with a quick update on some of our development programs as well. So first to the current market environment. Uh, deliveries last year stood at 528 aircraft, which was down slightly from uh, the previous year by about 8%, uh, but down substantially from the peak in 2008 at 927. So we've seen a substantial decline from the peak that we had a few years ago, although the, the rate of uh, decline has certainly leveled off from <coughs> excuse me, where it was uh, last year in 2009. So we, we believe we're at the, at the, the trough of, uh, of where we are in, in the cycle within the business aircraft market. When you start to break down those deliveries by the main categories that we look at, late, medium, and, and large, the large category, where our Global Express uh, resides, has seen, in fact, increased deliveries through this downturn. It has seen uh, a fairly strong uh, order, uh, order trend through that time period, and that's translated into increased deliveries through that time period. The light category, on the other hand, at the other end of the market has seen substantial declines in deliveries. It remains the weakest part of the, the market segment, both in terms of orders and in deliveries. And the medium category equally has, uh, has seen a decline. Generally, the trend that we've seen is as you go smaller in aircraft, the, 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 the part of the market has been, has been hit. Net orders have uh, returned to positive territory in 2010, according to our, our estimates. Uh, certainly 2009 was, uh, was the trough in terms of orders with all the, the major cancellations that we saw in the business aircraft market last year. That trend has been reversed, so we do believe we're at the beginning of a recovery within the business aircraft market and the business aircraft cycle. Approximately 180 orders on a net order basis uh, were seen in last year. 2010 also saw a continuing trend that we've seen over the last little while where the majority of those orders are coming from international markets. Approximately 10 years ago, the majority of uh, the orders, about 70%, were in the, in the North American region, and that has reversed itself over the last 10 years. We're now approximately 65 to 70% of the orders are, in fact, from international markets. Last year, 2010, North American market uh, recovered a little bit in terms of its share, uh, but still below its, its, its uh, share from about 10 years ago. And what you will also see in there is some pretty significant increases in a couple of key regions that uh, we expect to continue in the future, notably India, which doubled from 2 to 4 percent, and China, which increased to 9 percent of uh, the orders based on our estimates last, last year. <coughs> Of course, with uh, a, a, albeit a slight decrease in deliveries, still uh, relatively flat to deliveries from 2009 to 2010 and reduced orders, we did see a decline further in the backlog from 2009 to 2010 from approximately $50 billion to approximately $40 billion. Given the weaknesses in the smaller categories, the medium and the light category, and the relative strength in the large category, the large category in the backlog now takes up approximately two-thirds of the backlog for all of the uh, all of the competitors. Bombardier, however, is the industry leader both in terms of deliveries and revenues. Last year in 2010, we had a 32% market share in terms of, of revenues, leading it in terms of revenues, and also in terms of unit deliveries, given our very broad product portfolio, we were the leader in terms of unit deliveries at 28%. And that trend continued in the first quarter of 2011. Gamma just released the results uh, for the first quarter last week, and we in fact had a 40% market share, both in terms of revenues and units. So we carried that leadership through into the first quarter of 2011. In fact, from one quarter to the next, increased it quite substantially. Turning to the uh, to the to uh, the economy, the economy did rebound very nicely in 2010. And we see though that growth and very high GDP growth rates, as Marie uh, referred to uh, previously, 
uh, in the emerging markets, India, China, Latin America, and some key regions in, in Africa, such as Nigeria, where those uh, regions have grown at greater than 6% in 2010. But overall, within the world average at 3.9%, that's a pretty good rebound from what we saw economically over the, the last few years, and that certainly sets the stage for continued growth in, in uh, translating in orders and deliveries in the near and medium term. The business aircraft market conditions have continued to improve. Utilization both in Europe and in North America have increased over the last few years. Uh, just very recently, uh, the EBA released the utilization results for the European region and they were up again quarter over quarter, 3%. Uh, similarly, in the US, the utilization is increasing. Pre-owned inventory levels for the first time have fallen below 15% since we uh, went into this recession and went into this cycle and into this decline. Still above what we would consider to be the norm, which uh, does tend to create a, a drag on, on orders and deliveries, but it's certainly going in, in the right direction. And all of that is translating into increased market confidence and perception of where the market is going. As measured by UBS, the perception and the confidence uh, metric has increased back to normal levels at around 50%. So turning to the forecast, uh, as with uh, the commercial aircraft market forecast, notwithstanding we're at the, the start and the return to growth in this cycle, over the long term we see a very, very strong market and all the market drivers remain very solid to build and sustain that growth over the long period. GDP drives fundamentally wealth and puts money into everyone's pockets and that's certainly the case for all the people that buy aircraft, be they public or private corporations or high net worth individuals. And the, the long-term growth rate of 3.4% that Murray talked about will certainly drive that wealth and is a fundamental driver for business aircraft orders and business aircraft deliveries. Globalization of trade clearly linked, in my view, to emerging markets. Uh, the, the worldwide trade is growing, especially in those emerging markets, and that does drive, especially for the long-range aircraft, uh, one of the main reasons why we launched the Global 7000-8000 program is that's driving a lot more business travel to these emerging markets and even within these emerging markets. A relatively new trend within the business aircraft market is uh, the replacement de demand that we are seeing and will continue to see over the next 20 years. Our customers do tend to roll over their fleets every 5 to 10 years and as that fleet, which is fairly substantial at just under 15,000 units, uh, it continues to grow, we'll see more replacement and more retirements over the next 20 years. And what will also continue to drive that is new aircraft programs. As new technology and new programs enter the market, that does tend to incentivize and drive people to upgrade their fleet and roll into new, uh, roll into new, new aircraft. And finally, accessibility, non-traditional solutions, uh, card programs, branded charter, that lowers the economics and, and really lowers the barrier of entry for, for many more people than we've ever seen before. And that tends to drive increased growth rates overall within the market. <clears throat> Our market forecast is uh, based on a regional penetration rate growth model. Uh, relatively straightforward conceptually when you look at this, we just look at how much the fleet and business aircraft flying has penetrated on a regional basis, on a bottom-up basis. So in a very mature market like North America where the size of the fleet is relatively large relative to the, uh, the, the population size and the economy, we see relatively low growth rates because it's a relatively mature market. In newer markets like Asia and in particular like China, where business aircraft flying is really just being discovered right now, uh, we're seeing much higher growth rates as both the GDP grow, uh, grows and as business aircraft becomes much more accepted. That's why we're seeing growth rates in uh, the, uh, the fleet rate, which are much higher than GDP in those emerging markets. So overall, over the next 20 years, we would see an average annual growth rate of the fleet uh, at a rate higher than GDP. Murray had talked earlier about a 20-year average forecast of 3.4% GDP, and we would see the fleet grow in the business, gen, uh, business jet market at 3.8%, so slightly higher overall throughout the world of uh, slightly higher than that GDP growth rate, but clearly in the emerging markets at much, much higher rates. Translating that fleet forecast uh, into unit deliveries over the next 10 years, uh, the model shows about 10,000 aircraft to be delivered over the next 10 years, so approximately on average per year, about 1,000 aircraft per year. Clearly we're at the trough and, and the beginning of a return to growth. Uh, we expect this year to be approximately flat, 2011 to 2010. Uh, with real growth returning in 2012, but by 2014 we expect to be at or near the peak 
that we previously saw in 2008, and then continuing to grow from there. And in the, in the subsequent 10 years, 2021 to 2030, about 14,000 units, so a total of 24,000 deliveries over the next 20 years. Those 24,000 deliveries translate into $626 billion worth of revenue over the period 2010 to 2030. Uh, on the revenue basis, uh, clearly the majority of uh, the dollars will be in the larger and ultra-long-range market uh, segment where our global uh, family operates, $260 billion. At the same time, in the Learjet market segment, we'll see the majority of the units being delivered, approximately 11,000 over the next 20 years. Geographically, uh, the U.S. will remain the number one market with approximately 4,200 units over the next uh, 10 years. Uh, followed secondly by, by Europe at almost 2,000 units, but we've seen a significant increase in, uh, in market uh, activity in China and we would forecast almost 1,000 units over the next 10 years in China alone. And it's uh, risen from being a relatively small market uh, to forecast to be over the next 10 years the third largest, third largest market worldwide based on the region and the fourth uh, largest market would be Latin America following that. So we're really seeing the emerging markets such as Ch uh, China, Latin America and India growing very strongly in terms of the number of deliveries. Today's fleet stands at just under 15,000 uh, units, 14,700, uh, with the 3,100 re replacements and retirements that we would see, uh, retirements uh, plus the 10,000 deliveries that will increase to over 21,000 units, and we expect over the 20 years, in fact, that uh, current fleet today to almost double, to more than double, in fact, over th to over 30,000 units. And you can see the rate of uh, retirements will increase in the second half of the, uh, uh, the forecast period as the number of aircraft uh, that getting older are increasing. So let me just touch on some of our, uh, some of our new programs and where we are with the development on those. Bombardier does have the world's in the industry leading business aircraft portfolio. We have a product family within each of the segments that I just talked about, the light, medium and, and large category the Learjet Challenger and World Global Brands respectively. Over 3,700 units are in uh, service worldwide and over 26 million flight hours with the, uh, the long history of product uh, development and introduction of new aircraft over the years. Within those uh, families we have 12 programs overall in service programs and programs that are under delivery right now plus the development programs, notably the Lear 85 and the global, new global family, the global 7000 and global 8000. Uh, in the Learjet family, we have the, the six-seater Lear 40 and the Lear 45 and the Lear 60 XR and the, the brand new Lear 85 element. I'll touch on where we are with that program just shortly. Challenger 300 and the Challenger 605 lead the medium category with uh, annually approximately 50% market share. Uh, and we have, in addition to those, those uh, aircraft, the Challenger 850 and Challenger 870, a uh, very large cabin uh, aircraft in the Challenger family. Global 5000 and the Global 6000 were added uh, at the NBAA last year uh, with the two new programs, the Global 7000 and, and the Global 8000. One of the key uh, uh, benchmarks, in my view, that Bombardier Aerospace has done is continued through this uh, downturn to invest in a number of areas, most notably its product development. Last year we invested almost a, a billion dollars in new development programs uh, uh, across both commercial and business aircraft. And in business aircraft alone we have the Global 7000-8000 program, the Global Vision, uh, a new uh, uh, cockpit program for the current platforms, as well as the Learjet 85 programs. And as you can see relative to our competition, we have a significant number of programs which are under development which will sustain us and really support the kind of growth that we see in the 20-year forecast. Lear 85, Global Vision uh, uh, cockpit, as I talk about, the Global 7000, 8000 are, are new programs that uh, will continue to sustain us in our leadership position as, as the market continues to grow in all of those segments. On the Lear 85 program, we're making great progress uh, within that, uh, within that uh, program. The Mexico factory, which was uh, building the main components and main assemblies for the Lear 85, uh, that factory has been complete, tooling is going in there now, and Belfast, which you'll see tomorrow, there's been significant progress in the, in the build of that uh, facility as well too, and just very recently we started the first phase of our Wichita um, uh, building, uh, breaking ground on the final assembly facility there. 
We are in the heart of the detailed design phase for the Leary 5 program. We've released more than 6,000 drawings uh, from which we're already starting to manufacture parts both for testing and for the first, uh, first aircraft. We've uh, commissioned 44 test rigs. Those parts are being delivered to those test rigs, both at our own facilities and, our, and at our partner facilities. And we've uh, done a lot of work on composite uh, manufacturing, composite tooling as well, too. Composite parts are being manufactured in Belfast. Last year, we manufactured a full fuselage manufacturing uh, validation unit, uh, which we have been testing since then as well, too. We're well on track for service entry in 2013. Global Vision, the new cockpit, uh, Collins uh, uh, Proline Vision Suite, uh, uh, all of the, uh, the components uh, from Aqua Collins were TSO in April of 2011, which is significant progress to get those boxes certified by Rockwell Collins. Uh, and we're now uh, in the process of getting the aircraft level certification statement of compliance done for the, uh, for the aircraft. We have ac accumulated over 600 flight hours in that program uh, with the fleet three flight test aircraft that we have. Uh, we've in fact have uh, uh, transitioned five production aircraft from a final assembly line into our completion center to start work on the interior completions. And in our uh, hangars in Toronto, uh, the, in the final assembly line, we have all of our aircraft that are being completed with the Vision, Vision cockpit. And we're well on target to uh, meeting our commitments to our customers for EIS and first delivery planned in the first quarter of 2012. Global 7000-8000 program, of course, we, uh, we launched with great fanfare at NBAA in 2010. We've had a very positive market response uh, since then. Of course, on the sales side, that was uh, keynoted by order to, uh, to NetJets earlier the, this year in February. 50 aircraft, which included 20 Global 7000 and 8000 aircraft. We're in the early phases of uh, the program, really in the uh, uh, early joint definition phase and, and supplier selection phase, so we're in the middle of our early uh, wind tunnel testing. A couple of days ago we announced several major suppliers to the program. Uh, Arolia, which is an EADS program, will be manufacturing the center fuselage. Uh, Triumph Fair Structures has been announced as the supplier and manufacturer of the new high-speed transonic wing. Hamilton Sunstrand will be a major system supplier for us with uh, the APU, the electrical system, and one other component which I'm sure Janice can remind me of later and Intertechnique, which is supplying the fuel system and the oxygen, oxygen system. And of course, we have GE supplying the engines, and we have a number of major components that Bombardier, the structural components that Bombardier itself <coughs> is, uh, will be supplying. Uh, being in the, detail, in the joint definition phase, we uh, are focusing a lot on defining the aircraft, and we're using a lot of input from our customers to make that happen. Uh, and we're focusing on three main areas that we fo uh, focus some customer uh, groups on maintenance, cabin, experience, and operations. And although we're, we're very early in the program and focusing on uh, definition, we're well on target with everything that we've uh, planned to do. So in conclusion, uh, we're at the start of uh, the business aircraft recovery and the start of the, the new cycle in the business aircraft market. And we're very confident of a positive outlook over the next 20 years within this market segment. 10,000 deliveries over the next 20 years 24,000 over the next 20, 626 billion dollars worth of, of revenues. New emerging markets, particularly in China, will grow to be the third largest area for deliveries uh, with North America and Europe over the, the next forecast uh, period. And with our new product developments and in particular the new products that we just launched, uh, particularly with the Global 7000-8000 program, we feel very well positioned to respond to the growth over the next 20 years. <coughs>